This is video three for the atoms and heat unit. So this one we're going to start talking about temperature scales. Um, the concept of temperature was invented long before we understood what it was. It was measured using devices called thermometers. Uh, people could make thermometers that would always uh, that would always agree, more or less, and they did that using the zeroth law. It didn't matter what the material is made of, though. Now, there are two common temperature scales, Fahrenheit and Celsius, or centigrade, as it used to be called. So if I want to convert them, so if I want to know what the temperature is in centigrade or Celsius, I take the temperature in Fahrenheit, minus 32, and then I would take that number and multiply by the fraction 5 ninths. And then with a little bit of algebra, you could get this relationship here. So if you know what the temperature is in Celsius, you can um, calculate what it is in Fahrenheit. So how do we develop each uh, scale? So originally, Fahrenheit wanted 100 degrees to be human body temperature and zero degrees to be the coldest temp that could be reached in a lab. And in some ways, he was successful and wasn't. Uh, you know, human body temperature is, what, 98.6? So uh, really close to 100 degrees. The way he got um, the, the zero degrees was he uh, took some ice, mixed in some salt water with it, and uh, because it's uh, an exothermic reaction, as the ice melts, it makes the surroundings even colder. But really, it's kind of arbitrary if you think about it. For the Celsius scale, it's based on water. One hundred degrees is boiling, and zero degrees is based on freezing. Well, 100 is boiling, condensating. It's a, that's the point at which water either becomes a gas or a gas becomes liquid. And zero is the point at which water either freezes or ice melts to become water. You know, those are the, the, the points there. All right, now, what would happen if the molecules actually came to a stop and have zero kinetic energy? Well, that can happen, theoretically at negative 273 degrees Celsius. We call this absolute zero. Uh, and if we plug negative 273 into our formulas, we get negative 459 degrees Fahrenheit. So then using this fact, we can define a new temperature scale called the absolute or the Kelvin scale. And it helps us to calculate the kinetic energy of molecules. So kinetic energy for a molecule will equal 2 times 10 to the negative 23rd times the temperature in Kelvin. So if you were to double the temperature on the Kelvin scale, then you would double the kinetic energy. And that's regardless of what type of material. 
Uh, we can also do some converting from the Kelvin scale to the Celsius by subtracting. Uh, the temperature on the Celsius scale equals the temperature Kelvin minus 273. And you can do a little bit of algebra there to go from Celsius to Kelvin, Kelvin back to Celsius. Okay, now to talk about uh, a tragedy. Um, many of you were probably too young to remember this, but uh, this was actually the year I graduated from high school. So on February 1st, 2003, the Columbia Space Shuttle broke apart in flames as it re-entered the atmosphere, and it did kill all seven astronauts on board. So we want to understand why that happened. Uh, the Space Shuttle will always generate enormous amounts of heat when it re-enters the, you know, the thicker part of the Earth's atmosphere. And you know that's because of the large amount of kinetic energy it has. So in order to slow down, the Space Shuttle needs to lose that kinetic energy. So we're going to use something called the Mach Rule to help us do some calculating. So um, first off, we, can, we need to understand th some things about the Space Shuttle. First off, it takes 15 hours for it to go once around the Earth. That's incredibly fast. Uh, if you think about it like this, it takes you 24 hours to go around the Earth. You know, if you stop and think about that for a second, you know, if you're standing, the Earth is spinning, you're spinning with the Earth, so it takes you 24 hours to make one complete rotation. So the space shuttle does that in 15 hours, so it's faster than you. Um, oh, I'm sorry, not 15, 1.5, need to read my handwriting. So it's even quicker. So it takes a space shuttle 1.5 hours to go around the, uh, the center of the Earth, or the circumference of the Earth. That is incredibly fast. So the velocity then, uh, the circumference of the Earth is 24,000 miles. and it's doing it in 1.5 hours. So the space shuttle is traveling at 16,000 miles per hour. So uh, that's right around 7,000 meters per second, which is roughly 22 times the speed of sound. So it's Mach 22. It slowed down to roughly 18.3 times the speed of sound when it broke apart. So it was still traveling at Mach 18. Again, that is very, very, very fast. Okay, so the energy then, the way we can use this, um, or its, its temperature, if you will, was 300 times the Mach squared. That's the Mach rule. So, Three hundred times eighteen point three squared. So that was roughly ten or hundred thousand Kelvin. That is about uh, seventeen times hotter than the surface of the sun. That is hot. So where do we get this mock rule from? How can we how can we derive this? You know, three hundred seems like an arbitrary number. Well, first off, temperature is related to kinetic energy. And kinetic energy 
is one half times mass times velocity squared. So if the velocity increases by 18.3, then the kinetic energy will increase by 18.3 squared because it's one half mv squared. We, we want to square the velocity. And that comes up to 335. You know, 18.3 squared. Now, room temperature is 300 Kelvin. You can do the math if you want to for that. So then, if the temperature increases by 335, that means we take 300 Kelvin times 335, we get 100,000. So, temperature equals 300 times the Mach squared. Now, there's no way to avoid turning this kinetic energy into heat on re-entry. You cannot avoid it because you have to get rid of that kinetic energy somehow. So, the space shuttle is designed to have heat-resistant ceramic tiles on the bottom. Uh, what happened was during re-entry, uh, one of these tile faces, uh, or during it, what happens is that the, the tile faces uh, air blowing against it very, very fast. So as those air particles bounce off the ceramic tiles, it causes their temperature to increase and it glows thousands of degrees. And then they lose this heat by conduction with the air and by radiation. So they cool off by the time the shuttle lands. The shuttle itself contains very, very little fuel on reentry. It's used all of its fuel to get to outer space. Uh, so there's no explosives, obviously. So what happened was it was the kinetic energy of motion that then turned into heat, and that's what destroyed uh, the space shuttle. Okay, um, kind of a bummer to end on, but we will end the video three on this uh, topic.